Imagine an ordinary living room. Now imagine it in a world without oil or without products made using oil. Without oil, things would look very different. But do we have to depend on it? I mean, oil takes millions of years to form and it's a complex and expensive process to get out of the ground or from under the seabed. What's more, sometime in the future, there'll be no more to get out. And in the meantime, what is it doing to our environment? In a valley in Wales, there's somewhere dedicated to showing there are alternatives to complete dependency on oil. Known as the Centre for Alternative Technology, it focuses on materials and energy that are renewable. Renewable energy. Energy sources that will never run out because they are always replaced naturally. Like from the sun, the wind and waves. Renewable materials and energy, and energy conservation, are features of the Centre's main building. It has walls of clay, a wooden frame, and to keep warmth in and cold out, sheep's wool for insulation. Inside, earth, like you find in a garden, compressed to make up walls that support the roof. This gets warmed up by sunlight coming through the building's many windows and stores heat. Beneath the wood floor is a central heating system that uses water heated by a wood fueled boiler and by the sun, an idea borrowed from the Romans. Nothing's used that might cause environmental damage. But what is it that's causing the damage to the environment? Right, what we try to do here is to use fossil fuels as little as possible. Well, their greenhouse is as good as any place to start. It's not a heat, it's solar energy, and it comes in a range of wavelengths. The sun sends shortwave radiation through the Earth's atmosphere and through the greenhouse glass. Some of the radiation is absorbed by the Earth and by plants while the rest is bounced back in the form of long-wave radiation. But long-wave radiation can't pass easily through glass, so the heat is trapped inside. But the same effect is happening on our planet. With carbon dioxide acting like the greenhouse glass, the sun's energy is absorbed, long-wave radiation is given off, and the heat is trapped in the atmosphere. And because we're producing so much carbon dioxide by burning fossil fuels, it's making the whole planet warm up. Greenhouse effect. Process by which naturally occurring gases, including carbon dioxide and methane, trap the sun's heat within the Earth's atmosphere. This keeps the Earth about 30 degrees C warmer than it would otherwise be, and is essential for the survival of life on Earth. Global warming. The view that the Earth's temperature is being increased, partly due to emissions of gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, as a result of human activities. These include burning fossil fuels, cement manufacture, cow and sheep rearing and deforestation. This may lead to global warming. And concern over global warming is growing, with fears that it's changing the world's climate. More and more people are looking to find alternatives to the non-renewable energy sources used every day. We need a certain amount of carbon dioxide, and it's only when there's too much of it that it causes the biggest problem. At the Centre for Alternative Technology, they use the sun as an important source of energy used here to drive a small water pump. It works because those solar panels on the top are made up of silicon cells, and though they don't work when they're covered, they generate electricity when light falls on them. So that makes each cell produce 0.45 of a volt of electricity. Put in front of bright lights, these single cells produce about a watt of electricity, enough to make a buzzer buzz, and a propeller do whatever propellers do. Watt, a unit of power. An ordinary light bulb uses between 40 and 100 watts. But these are solar panels. 
What'll happen outside on a grey winter's afternoon in Wales? Because the amount of power for each cell is so small, they're connected together in groups as solar panels to make them useful. At the centre, they put them on the roof of buildings. Now let's really make the cells work, driving the propeller to power a homemade boat. Apart from using the sun's free energy, there's one other advantage of solar cells. Nothing moves in them, so there's nothing to go wrong. Solar energy has been used for many years, and in this country, its main use has been in water heating. This experiment is to make a solar water heater using foil to reflect the sun, coiled tubing to carry water and cling film to trap the long-range infrared radiation. Question for the smart ones. Why is the tubing that's being used black? There have been many odd, you might say plain daft ideas about using solar panels. Like this solar car built 20 years ago. Imagine breaking down on a motorway because you ran out of sun. But it's been used seriously for many years where there's plenty of sun and few alternatives. Like cattle ranches in the outback of Australia. Out here's too far from towns for underground or overhead electricity cables. And the roads are too poor for regular deliveries of fuel for diesel generators. Apart from making a sunshade, these solar panels in India are providing power to pump water to the fields and charge batteries that store energy for light and whatever else needs electricity at night. And then there's fridges. We take them for granted. But inventing solar fridges meant medicines could be stored and used in hot, isolated places for the first time. As the cells have improved, their use has grown in countries like ours. You can often see them on new buildings. This petrol station roof is entirely made from solar panels producing 28 kilowatts in bright sunshine. Water power is another renewable energy source. This model shows how waves can be used to drive a turbine that's lighting this lamp. Waves in the sea and the movement of tides are good for power generation especially here in the British Isles, where we're surrounded by sea. You may well recognise this as a source of power. The water wheel has been grinding corn and powering industry for centuries. On a much bigger scale, the use of moving water to create hydroelectricity has been around for 80 years. As long as there's a supply of water, its force can turn wheels or electricity generating turbines. Here at the centre, their reservoir supplies water to drive turbines. What's causing this seat to move is a strong breeze blowing along the valley. The movement here is generated by the wind catching the blades of the windmill above. Actually, they call it a wind machine. And if it generates electricity, it's a wind generator or wind turbine. Making your own wind generator is a good way of testing out what types of materials and shapes are the most effective. Right, what have you got? This one produced just over a watt. Do you feel the wind in our backs? The centre has two full-sized wind generators. This, the biggest and most remote, can produce 600 kilowatts an hour, enough to run about 3,000 televisions. Device up on the top, which measures the direction of the wind, and another little one that measures the speed of the wind. And then those send an electronic message to the computer. So the computer controls it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Inside, they calculate the power generated and get a readout of the variations as the wind changes. 
what this graph is showing us is the wind speed here, and you can see how it's been fluctuating up and down. And over here, you can see the power output of the wind turbine. If you look there, there's a peak, there's a high point, and there's a high point there. So that was when we were getting an awful lot of power. But how big are those blades? Answer, very big. Back at the centre, they have one on display. What do you think this um, blade is made of? Metal. Metal would probably be a bit too brittle. It would probably break eventually, because the blades get a lot of twisting. It's a mixture of fibreglass and wood. And they can provide energy for you and me, not just centres like this one. There are over 800 large wind generators in the UK at wind farms like this. And that would provide enough electricity for the homes of 250,000 people. More than the population of a city like Aberdeen or a big town like Swindon. That's about 0.3% of Britain's needs. And what of other renewables? Solar panels provide less than 0.001% of Britain's electricity each year though that's a lot more than it used to be. And about 2% of the electricity in your home comes from the different types of water power. Which isn't a lot, really. Hard to get going, isn't it? So is it possible that by building more of these renewable energy sources, we could have a world dependent on only renewable energy? Well, there is a drawback. We haven't been entirely honest with you in making this film. It was so dull when we filmed the solar boat that we um, cheated a little by using powerful film lights as an artificial sun. And when we were ready to film the wind seat, we had to wait around for ages because there was hardly any wind at all. Natural resources don't always deliver when you want them. What's more, how would our students have reached the centre if they hadn't had a diesel-powered bus to get them here? And there are other concerns. To create water power, the natural landscape might need to be changed. Low-lying areas like river valleys and wetlands may need to be flooded or destroyed. What about the wildlife that needs these special areas to survive? What will happen to them? What impact will structures like wind turbines have on the scenery? and solar panels are expensive to make and to buy. That could put them beyond the reach of many countries where there's the most sun and the most need. So what's the answer? And is it worth looking for? And can we afford not to? Ice cups start to melt. You could cycle. Oh, in the summer, it's one school. And we've got so used to, like, natural gas and oil and stuff like that. Close windows and doors and um, put draft strips underneath doors. Aha! Saving energy. Perhaps that's the key. What are the parts of your home could be insulated? The roof. At the centre, they have created buildings that use novel forms of energy conservation and low-impact materials. About a four would be a bit damp. Low impact materials. Materials that have little or no effect on the environment when they're made. And back at the building we started with, their visitor centre is designed to conserve energy and built with materials that don't damage the environment when they're made. And the whole centre uses a combination of many different kinds of renewable energy sources. So it's not dependent on just one. Can we all do it? Not just one or two places, but the whole of the UK, the whole of the world. It will mean a change in the way we create and use energy, and that will affect pretty well everything about the way we live. Is that something you're prepared to accept? And what do you think will happen if changes aren't made? <laughs>